Hello everyone, welcome to my studio. Today we're gonna make a little beach painting inspired by the works of Karine Blanchet. Now this black and white print doesn't give it justice, but if you go on her website, you'll see um, how she uses lots of tonalities of grays and blues and browns and um, greens. It's actually quite cool the way she builds her painting. There's many layers, there's lots of texture, which we're not going to do today because we're doing a quick painting. But this is our inspiration. So because Karen uh, uses a lot of grays in her work, we're actually going to build a gray background. But before I get to that, let me show you the colors I have. Raw Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Crimson Red, yes, Raw Sienna, Tallow Blue, a little bit of black, which is rare for me, yellow cadmium, and titanium white. So that's enough to make the purples and the turquoises we're going to work with today. But let's start with our gray background. So just a dab of black into it. Did you see how little teeny dab and I end up with this really dark gray? Um, another thing to know about grays and browns, actually all acrylic colors, dry, when they dry, they become a little bit darker. So that's something to keep in mind when you make your colors. And that is actually even more important when you use grays and browns, because they will dry even darker than all the other colors. I've actually used a blow dryer to dry my paper because um, we're going to do our drawing now so we need the background to be dry. At home you may be working with a canvas. I choose paper just because it's simpler for me in my studio and I don't sell these pieces. Um, but for you if you're making something you want to be a little more permanent then canvas could be a good choice. Then you wouldn't have the tape as well. Okay, drawing. So I'm using a 6B, so you can see my lines really well. Start your lines light and then move on to darker lines as you are happy with your sketch. First piece of information I'm going to put in is this sort of line here. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it's pretty much halfway through the painting, maybe a smidge higher, but I'm not going to be too fussy. I'm going to make myself a bit of a halfway line. Okay, so that will be this line. Then I'm going to position this line, which to me reads almost like the end of the beach. And the ocean would be past that, I would think, if that is the ocean. Okay, I am going to, actually I'll start with my guy. So this is about the center of our composition. My guy is standing to the side. So if I'm looking at my center here, he would be somewhere about here. I see a guy, but it could be a kid, it could be a girl, however you want him to be or her. Okay, and then I'm gonna position rocks. So these are rocks, and I'm feeling like this collection of rock is the focal point. So I'm going to establish this line and I'm going to move on to draw these guys. I'm going with, going a little bit more narrow than this space here, but not too, too much. And then this guy, he's almost like a mirror image of our subject when it comes to where he's positioned, the tip is positioned vertically. So 
I'm looking at my little guy being here, then I'm going to want the tip of my rock to end up just about here. So I see, I tell you this a lot when you build up your composition in your drawing. These are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself. You have to wonder visually what is the relationship between every element. I'm going to put that one in. This doesn't matter if we were a bit of, run out of room for a bit of this, but this one matters. So I'm going to position that one first. And I'm already too crammed, aren't I? So I might move a few things. And that's why you want your first few lines to be a bit delicate, because you will most likely make changes, which I'm doing right now. So this gives you the space to move things around if you're not stuck with really dark lines. that's enough information to go on so take your time at home if you're not quite happy yet with your sketch um, just go ahead and pause the video and fiddle with it okay but I'm gonna go with that okay I'm gonna start with placing down my whites. So it's feeling like a stormy sky or a cloudy day. So we're gonna cover the sky with white and we'll do the same, which I imagine these sort of areas here are puddles of water where the sky is reflected. So you end up with this white. So often the color of the water is not actually the color of the water, it's the color of the sky that is reflected or whatever is present. Okay, that's a first layer. You can already see that as it dries, it becomes a little more transparent. So we're gonna go right ahead and add a second layer, but we won't add it everywhere. 
we want to maintain some of this gray peeking through. And we're just going to do a little bit of a distributed effect. I'm not too worried about maintaining the shape of my little dude here. In fact, I'm going to dig into him a little bit. It's easier to make him bigger after than to try and make him skinnier later on. So better to start too skinny and then go back on top of my sky after. Okay, we're going to move on to the next bit. We're going to do this section here. Um, it's just a bit grayer, but we're going to lighten up the gray a little bit. So it's almost what we got down right now, but I'm going to go just a smidge lighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown to this lovely little gray I'm making right now, just to Oh, I feel like I'm a little too light. It will darken as it dries, but I still want a bit of a contrast with the sky. I love this stage of the painting when you're blocking out zones. It just feels so satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna start with our browns. You can't see it in the black and white, but in the image at the beginning of this video, you probably saw a lot of this area here is brown and then it's spread a little bit throughout so i'm going to go with that i'm going to wake up my brown a little bit this is raw umber it's pretty uh, neutral almost leans towards gray so by adding a little bit of red i'm giving it a little bit more life so i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna follow the darks that I see in her image. Eventually we will deviate, but at this stage, uh, we don't want to deviate too much. At this stage, you want to make sure that you maintain an understanding of the shape. So if you stray right away from your model, you're going to get lost. So we'll do that later, but for now, just be reasonable. I'm going to use that brown and I'm going to modify it to make it a bit lighter. So if I were to add strictly white to this dark brown that I made, it would turn very gray. So I'm bringing in some raw sienna, which really allows me to keep that brown alive and I don't know if brilliant's the right word, but just a little more joyful. If you're feeling like you don't have enough control with your big um, half inch brush, half inch brush like mine, move down to a smaller square brush. Try not to get into um, brushes that are too small though, because you're gonna lose the looseness of what we're trying to do and you're gonna end up stiffening up.
So don't go with a little pointy brush like this one. This would really be a bad choice at this point. You could use that at the end, but not for now. So you saw I started with my darker brown and then I did a middle tone and then a highlight. Um, that's those, all those tonalities are very important. You need those three levels of light and dark to really establish three dimension. Oh, I made a mess there. Look at that. Um, so most of my students, actually pretty much all of them are afraid of pushing their lights and darks to those limits. And we're not even there yet. We're going to go lighter and darker still. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're resisting putting down a light color or a dark color. Um, well, you're normal, first of all. And then again, go against your resistance. Um, it's important to have them there. And really, the resistance is fear-based. You probably have something pretty decent on the canvas and you're thinking, that if you make a change that's too drastic, you're going to wreck it. You won't. You're just going to make it better. And if you wreck it, then we'll just paint over it. Not a big deal. Okay, I'm making a turquoise. I didn't put turquoise on my palette today because I wanted to show you how to make it with this tallow green and this yellow cadmium. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to make. So we're going to go. She's got a lot of turquoise in that painting. I'm adding a little brown just to gray it up a bit. So I'm going to establish my darkest areas of turquoise and then I'll come back and lighten them up a bit. So one thing I've noticed when I was working is that I held my breath a little bit. I keep forgetting to mention that it happens a lot when you're painting that you have a tendency to uh, start tightening up. And when you do that, you can easily get lost and hold your breath. So try and keep reminding yourself that you need to breathe. This is just a painting. It's not a big deal. And the more relaxed your body will be, the better you'll paint. So, and I don't mean like relax laying on the couch. I mean, just good posture, good breathing, 
and try and make the most of this experience. Okay, we're moving on to purples. She does have a lot of purples in the front. Um, you can follow along with me, but if you have printed a color version, then you'll really see those colors. Okay, for this rock here, it's almost like an in-between purple and turquoise, so I'm actually gonna go right ahead and play with that. I quite like this color. And that color actually is echoed down here as well. So we're gonna do that. It's surprising how well purple and turquoise mix together. They make just a very beautiful color. the top of that rock I'm mixing in with my light light brown I'm getting a bit of a grayish blue which is what I was looking for Okay, I'm going to change my brush because I'm finding that I'm having a hard time establishing a little more details with this very big brush of mine. So I'm going to go with this one, which is a bit smaller than the other one. So I'm bringing in some light and I'm not too fussy about the color choices I'm making but I'm still trying to stay within families. So remember when I said we're gonna push our light even lighter? So this is where we're at. And I'm playing all over my painting. You don't wanna do just one rock, finish it, and then try and move on to the others. If you do that, you're gonna end up with a bunch of rocks that don't relate to each other you'll have problems with relationship in size and colors uh, it's gonna feel really weird so I strongly recommend even though it doesn't feel natural when you start painting your insecurity makes you want to just finish something and feel satisfied with that little bit um, and that that's gonna be a problem like, give yourself the okay the chance to be in a bit of a danger and not seeing right away how this painting is going to come together 
but just follow along and dab everywhere all around your canvas. So I'm just putting on random little details that I feel make my painting easier to understand. So this is kind of the point where I'm not looking as my, at my model as much as I want you to do when you start a painting. Um, I know I always insist on looking at your model, yes, especially if it's a really precise painting. But when you get to this stage where you've put down information that is somewhat deviating from your model, which is okay, we're good with that. So now that relationship happens here. It doesn't happen there anymore. So now you have to look at what is going on on that specific painting and what is it that I want to highlight or push back or make stronger. So I'm going for it. I'm putting a shadow at the bottom and then I'm coming back with some highlights. That's a nice little detail. Um, I'm going to push some of my shadows by going with something that's... So I'm kind of cheating. That blue and that red don't really go together because the, there's too much green in this and green and red together don't really work but I want something super dark. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back in there with this new dark color and I'm gonna anchor my rocks by giving them really strong shadows. satisfied with that for the shadows. Now I'm going to go push my highlights. I'm feeling like a lot of them are looking a little too neutral. So I'm going to go. Sometimes you can even cheat. Bring a smidge of yellow, which I don't know if Karen did or not. But the yellow somehow makes it look like it's getting a little bit more light. Another thing that you want to do at this stage is really re-establish a presence of your dominant rocks in front of the others. So you want to take the edge of your rock and really bring it right in front of the one that's behind it. And that really helps setting the stage for um, perspective. I am pretty happy with those. I'm going to come and fix, I made some little boo-boos. I don't know if they've been driving you crazy the whole time. They've been driving me crazy. So I'm going to fix those. So this is a good stage in the painting to sort of look back and decide, have I done anything that I'm not really happy with that I would like to change? 
So this is the time to do that. And take your time like this. This can take you half an hour, just this little tidy up at the end there. Rocks are easy to misshape when you paint. So don't be too hard on yourself. It's very possible that you tried your best and yet you're not feeling like your rocks are rocks. But again, go back to highlights and lowlights. That is really the key for rocks is establishing these strong, strong shadows and these strong, strong highlights. If you skip that step, you're not going to have rocks. Okay, we're going to paint our little guy. And I'm going to just gray up that turquoise just to vary it a little bit. And also, he's kind of way out there, so he would be a little bit grayer. If the shape is wrong, we can always come back with the white and push it back in. Now I'm using the edge of my brush to follow these nice straight lines. I'm going to give him a highlight on the shoulder. That always helps in understanding that we're dealing with a three-dimensional form. Now I'm going to reshape this dude just by bringing in some white and adjusting wherever I feel I need to. dry this and take the tape off. This is dry. Let's move these things out of the way. And I am going to show you the finished product. Let's reveal. The big reveal. Oh, I'm going under the tape. That happens. Okay, that is pretty darn sweet. I hope Karen likes it. So the inspiration for, day, for today was a painting by artist Karen Blanchet. She lives in Edmonton. She's been practicing for a long time. She's a very competent artist. Uh, you can check out her website at Karen Blanchet. That's B-L-A-N-C-H-E-T dot C-A. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our time with me today. And I will see you in my studio for our next project.